So just following on from the previous video on action capacity, if you haven't seen it, definitely go back and have a look at that, is that we're likely to see a change in the way use of force is done, both mostly within law enforcement and military populations. So when it comes to use of force, there's a perceptual component as people try and work out what it actually means, what threat assessment there is, okay, what that means to them, so the magnitude of it, the proximity. There's a number of sort of subconscious processes that go on with perception to try and work out what it means as far as threat. Then there's a prediction as to the options available, their ability and their competence to be able to solve that problem. The actions available based on that perception and prediction and then there's a perception around how much energy it's going to take to solve that problem a prediction around whether they've got that energy whether they can do it and then ultimately it comes down to whether they have a bit of certainty or whether there's uncertainty that they can do it so if they have a reduced fitness standard and they've got this lower action capacity that i spoke about there's going to be more uncertainty that they can solve that problem with just their physical ability or just their physical capacity so if there's uncertainty or they've changed the way that they've perceived the situation, so they've perceived it as more difficult than what it actually is, they've predicted that they have less ability to be able to solve that problem, okay, there's uncertainty as to whether they can do it without adding resources to themselves. So what you're likely to see is an increase in the amount of tools or equipment that people are going to rely on in use of force. So there is a term out there that explains some of this, which is called taser reliance, where people that have low physical ability to confront just physical violence or abusive people that are going to be physically confrontational is that they rely on the taser because they don't perceive they have the ability to solve that problem or to be able to take on that person. So what you see or what the risk is, is that you're going to see or potentially see people with a reduced fitness standard being or reliant on tools to solve problems that they may not necessarily have to have used. So it may be a benefit for law enforcement where you see less officer injuries, but you're more likely to see more people within the community being tasered. Whether that's right or wrong, I'm not really gonna talk about, but there's a risk that you'll see more use of force or more equipment used in use of force situations than what you normally would have. So that's one of the risks that comes with lowering the standard is that people are gonna be more reliant on the tools because they don't have the physical capacity or the physical ability to be able to solve that problem on their own. So lastly, I'm just going to talk about the individual when it comes to reducing the standard. So a lot of these organizations have reduced their physical standard, and I've spoken about a number of factors of that. The last one comes down to the individual. Just because they've lowered a standard doesn't mean as an individual, people have to meet that lower standard, okay? That's essentially just an element of laziness, is that now that their standard's gone to shit, is that I don't have to put in any effort to get there. So there is still an onus, a responsibility and accountability on the individual to actually meet the standard required to do the job or meet your best standard. So just because it's a lower standard doesn't mean you actually have to compromise your ability to grow or ability to become the best you can be at the job. So there is an individual onus on actually meeting the required standard or improving yourself so that you're at a good standard. Okay, and some of that comes down to motivations. So you could assume hypothetically that people that aren't motivated to actually get to a higher standard and have to meet the lower standard aren't really gonna be motivated to do their best throughout the job. So they're gonna be these people that go through, get through the recruitment or the selection process, and then they're happy with minimum standard for the rest of their career. Okay, and coming from a military environment where I've seen a lot of that, people just did something difficult, put, took their foot off the accelerator and then just coasted throughout their career. Okay, it's not exactly helpful or beneficial to the people in the organization who are trying to make an effort. Okay, the minimum standard, okay, it impacts performance for everybody. Okay, there's also a potential that it leads to complacency. People that are happy with minimum standard, aren't really that motivated, become complacent. Okay, and that's a risk to everybody. We see a lot of negative outcomes and a lot of the sort of catastrophic failures that I've seen or have looked at that have happened come down to complacency. So are we increasing the risk of people being complacent by allowing people who are happy with minimum standard coming in or these people that are unmotivated? And lastly, one of the considerations is that people that come in on a lower fitness standard are often at risk of being the first ones to leave. So a lot of them actually voluntarily leave because they realize that the job isn't for them because we've lowered the bar, we've allowed people to come in who may necessarily not have met all the attributes or factors previously, when they come in, they're just not prepared to do that job. So they're generally, or they're at risk of being the first to leave. So ultimately what we get when we lower the standard is we get this 
increase in injuries, we get this increase in people who are unavailable, we get more people that are going to leave earlier, and potentially all we get is that we just spend more time and effort in our recruitment phase, but we don't really end up with much of a change at the coal phase. So although reducing the standard may seem like a, a reasonable intervention or strategy to improve numbers, without really good inter interventions and without thinking about how we're going to combat some of these consequences, we may not actually see any change in the coal phase. It may just cost us more money, more time and more resources to see no difference.